Hello, good afternoon. A Conservative backbencher who's accused Downing Street of trying to blackmail some MPs seeking to oust Boris Johnson as Prime Minister is to meet the police to discuss his allegations. William Ragg said he'd be speaking to a Scotland Yard detective in the House of Commons early next week. The Prime Minister has said he's seen no evidence to support the claims, but Mr Ragg said he wanted any inquiry to be carried out by experts. Our political correspondent Helen Catt reports. Some of the methods used to persuade MPs to follow their party line have always been a bit murky. These extraordinarily public allegations levelled at the government and its whips are serious. That some Conservative MPs suspected of wanting Boris Johnson out have been on the end of attempts to intimidate them, with embarrassing stories in the press and threats to take away public money from their constituencies. The intimidation of a Member of Parliament is a serious matter. Moreover, the reports of which I'm aware would seem to constitute blackmail. Now Mr Ragg has arranged to meet the Met Police to discuss his allegations. Earlier this week, the former Tory MP Christian Wakeford defected to Labour. He later said he'd been told he wouldn't get a new high school in his constituency if he voted against the government on free school meals. Some have suggested there may be more claims to come. I must have spoken to about a dozen Tory MPs in the last few days who have um, made similar allegations about whips, um, either offering to withdraw um, uh, you know, financial support for their constituencies, either from the political party, so for campaigning, um, or for their um, constituents. Downing Street has said that if it is past evidence to support any allegations, it would look at it very carefully, but it hasn't seen any yet. Other Tories have said they haven't experienced any such behaviour. I have uh, voted against the government on occasions when I thought it right. And I have to say, I've always had a very close relationship uh, with the Chief Whip and indeed a very productive relationship with Whip. So I, I'm, uh, I'm waiting to hear more about this because it's not something I've seen or, or been told about. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister is expected to spend his weekend calling potential rebels. The senior official Sue Gray is expected to publish her report on Downing Street parties next week. It's being seen as a possible crunch moment for Boris Johnson's leadership. Helen Catt, BBC News. The chairman of the House of Commons Defence Committee says the UK must do more to support Ukraine as Russian troops gather at its border. The Conservative MP, Tobias Elwood, said he thought an invasion was now imminent and that President Vladimir Putin was taking advantage of a weakened West. It comes as the United States has delivered its first shipment of military cargo to Ukraine for use in the event of a conflict. Here's Mark LaBelle. The threat of conflict persists as President Putin continues his apparent drive for a new post-Cold War settlement. Ukraine is proving the biggest foreign policy test for President Biden since US troops left Afghanistan. He's left the White House for Camp David this weekend to meet his national security team and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who himself is returning from three days of few months with diplomatic talks failing, Putin's ultimatum demanding NATO push back. Of course, that, that was uh, dismissed, but that's gave, given him the pretext to actually say that there is an aggressor and that he must act. He's actually boxed himself into a corner uh, because so much effort has been put into this. Uh, but he also recognised that he will never again be as strong as this to take advantage of, of the West's weakness. I suspect an invasion is now imminent. Russia sparked this diplomatic conflict. This week, the US showed it's keen to resolve it peacefully. But it remains unclear how far both sides are prepared to go to placate the other. Mark Lobel, BBC News. The former Olympic champion cyclist Chris Boardman is to head up a new government body to encourage cycling and walking in England. Active Travel England aims to improve infrastructure for cyclists and pedestrians, as well as funding projects to enhance air quality. Lakshmi Kapal has more. Getting from A to B on foot or by bike is good for our health and the environment. But how good is our infrastructure for pedestrians and cyclists? The issue is being given cash from the government and clout from the former Olympic cyclist Chris Boardman. The gold medalist is to become interim commissioner of the government body Active Travel England. It's been set up to encourage walking and cycling by inspecting the standards of local highways, 
ensuring major planning applications cater for pedestrians and cyclists and funding projects to improve air quality. You want places where your kids can walk or ride to school and you can trundle to work on a bike. And to do that, you won't do it unless you feel safe or you can look out the car window and go, oh, that looks quite nice. And that's what this agency will do. The government has also announced today that it's spending £3 million on improving cycling infrastructure around train stations, including secure cycle parking facilities, and £300,000 to subsidise e-cargo delivery bikes for small businesses. This is all part of the £2 billion funding it's already pledged towards cycling and walking schemes over a five-year period. The question is how far that will go in improving infrastructure enough to make walking or cycling safe and practical travel options across the country. Lakshmi Gopal, BBC News. Let's take a look at all the sporting prospects now for the weekend and at the BBC Sports Centre. It's Sarah mobb -Kerings. Good afternoon to you, Sarah. Good afternoon, Sean. Let's start with tennis because Dan Evans, the last of seven British players in the singles at the Australian Open, has been knocked out at the third round stage. Despite competing well in a hard-fought first set, Evans was then outclassed by his opponent, Canada's Felix auger aliassime eventually losing 6-4, 6-1, 6-1. Here's our correspondent, Adam Wilde. The last Brit standing in the singles at the Australian Open and hopes were high that Dan Evans could carry those hopes into the last 16 given his form this year. His concentration was disturbed early on though by the sound of someone somewhere singing Let It Be which could be heard through the loudspeakers and sung so badly that Evans wasn't going to let it be. His service games were hitting the right note though and he matched the ninth seed Felix auger Aliassime for most of the first set until the British number two made sloppy errors and the Canadian was able to snatch the set. And that seemed to knock Evans' confidence out of Melbourne Park, not helped by auger Aliassime playing the best tennis he reckons he's ever managed at a Grand Slam. The second set gone in a flash. A chance perhaps for Evans to regroup and start the fight back, or perhaps not, as Auger Aliassime dominated the big points when it mattered to run away with the third set, cruising into the fourth round while Evans was left to reflect on what might have been. Adam Wilde, BBC News. Elsewhere in the men's draw, world number two from Russia, Daniel Medvedev, is safely through to the last 16, and so too is the fourth seed from Greece, Stefanos Tsitsipas. He won in four sets against France's Benoit Parr. Then in the women's draw, second seed Irina Sabalenka, she is through to the fourth round, along with Poland's Iga Swiatek, who had a comfortable straight set win against Russian Daria Kazakina. Football now and Everton are playing their first match since the sacking of manager Rafael Benitez last Sunday. They're up against Aston Villa in the Premier League's early kickoff at Goodison Park. Duncan Ferguson has taken over as caretaker manager. There is about five minutes to go there until half time. It remains goalless at the moment. There are four more matches today. Fourth placed West Ham are at Manchester United who are two points below them in seventh. There's not many managers who go to Old Trafford uh, and find that their team's above them in the, in the Premier League over, over many years. So you think when Sir Alex was the manager and how hard it was for MD to get in front of Manchester United. So uh, I'm pleased we're going back in front of them, but what really matters is us getting three points and what matters is that we're ahead of them certainly come the end of the season. The Scottish Cup has reached the fourth round stage. Later on, Aloha Athletic will be hoping to pull off a shock against Celtic, who have won the Cup no fewer than 40 times. The action is already underway. Non-league side Auchinleck Talbot are hosting Premiership side Hearts. About five minutes to go there until half-time. Uh, Hearts have the lead. Andy Halliday uh, with the first goal, and they have just scored a second penalty, so they lead 2-0. Scotland's Scott Jemison is still hanging on to the lead at Gov's HSBC Championship in Abu Dhabi. Jemison birdied the last hole to stay top of the leaderboard going into the final round on Sunday. Jemison is one shot clear of Ireland's Shane Larry and Belgium's Thomas Peters. And there was frustration for England's women's cricketers overnight with their second Ashes T20 match abandoned due to rain in Adelaide. They had actually made a decent start after being put into bat, reaching 25 without loss in just four overs. But then the weather ruled out further play. Australia lead the multi-format series three points to one after a thumping win in the first match. 
And as always, there is more on the BBC Sport website, including the latest from Rugby Union's Champions Cup. Bath are taking on Leinster right now. But tomorrow's match between Northampton and Racing 92 has been called off because of COVID cases in the Saints squad. Uh, that, Sean, is the sport for me. Sarah, thank you very much. Sarah Mulcair is there. That's it from us for now. The next news on BBC One is at 10 past five. Until then, have a very good afternoon.